Then he, he died. Like, no, he didn't die for like no. 25 years after. Man, that. he was in a coma he, for 25 years? No, he was Holy not in a crap. coma for 25 25- this week on Dueling Review, we take a look at Amazing Spider-Man number 18. Before Dead No More marches you closer to the Spider-Man event of 2016, the moment you've been waiting for has come. Doc Ock has been trapped in the body of the living brain since the first issue, but now it's time for him to act. Acting! Can never get rid of Dr. Octopus, unfortunately. No, and I don't. Which is okay, because I think the last time I was really, I mean, after Secret Wars screwed everything up for me mm-hmm. for reading Spider-Man, um, I really loved Doc Ock in Spidey's body, and I loved it when they parted ways and, and did all that, and, and you know, he got put in the brain's body. Because we covered that all on, 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 I believe, this show or somewhere, one of the major spoilers, many podcasts that we do. Mm-hmm. Um, but then after Secret Wars, I was like, okay, I'm drifting away from this completely, so I was only briefly, I think maybe that new Amazing Spider-Man number one volume is the only one that I got in. Mm-hmm. And uh, I hadn't read anything since then. So it's kind of weird to, you know, jump in. We know that there's this uh, Bring Back the Dead storyline that's kicking off. Uh, Dead in a no weeks. more. Dead no more. Written by the war doctor. Yeah, yeah. So we've got the Jackal who's somehow cloning people. And... Um, and uh, giving them this option of do whatever I tell you to do and live in peace and uh, or suffer the consequences by not getting your weekly pill or daily pill, I guess it is. Mm-hmm. And so there have been a lot of uh, characters that have been resurrected. And um, and in this issue, we yes. find that uh, the uh, Doc Ock has finally had enough of being in a robot body. Yes, a robot, if you will. A robot. And he has decided that he will get himself a real body. And he's going to steal Peter Parker's assistant guy. But no, wait, can't use him. Then he think, oh, I'm going to steal Peter. No, that doesn't work either. And then he's, I'll just clone myself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Because he finds out with this new U technology that's going on with the Jackal right. that, um, that you can clone an entire body. And here's the best part for Doc Ock because uh, his body was failing. It had some. Um, um, yeah, he had a fatal it, malady. Didn't it, yeah. Didn't he have a hereditary disease or some genetic defect or something that was causing him to fail? And that's why he was going to jump into Peter Parker's body to begin with. I don't remember. I remember him being like super, super sick. But I don't recall whether it was genetically a thing or if it was something related to one of his experiments. Yeah, I don't remember either, uh, but because it was cool. Because the experiments that led to him being bonded to the uh, robot arms mm-hmm. was actually an experiment involving radiation. Right. So I wonder, my brain wants to say that it was some sort of uh, carcinoma related to that radiation. but Well, I don't know, I but don't here's the thing. When you, when you go through this cloning process uh, mm-hmm. that uh, New You has, and it also brings back all of your memories – but it also filters out any genetic defects that you have and That's brings back all of your powers if you're a supervillain. Uh, and, and sort of because uh, in the process we find out that there's a new uh, Electro, now a girl. Uh-huh. Um, but it's it's kind of this process that, hey, Doc Ock, after, what, two years or something, almost three years, mm-hmm. is uh, finally going to be able to get back into his old body again or maybe not his old body maybe he's going to clone the peter parker body because he's still in love with the uh short scientist lady anna maria and uh he thinks that oh what she really wants is the octavius mind inside the parker body let's get creepy but that's not true either it is and it isn't i mean he thinks it is he thinks that that's exactly what he needs but he knows that if he just uh goes back and gets everything cloned correctly, he'll be right. But he thinks that that's what she wants because she tells him that she tells the brain that she's like, Hey man, I was in love with this guy with Peter Parker, who was the Octavius body. But then after everything fell out and I figured out what was going on, I did some research on Octavius and what a horrible person this guy is. Yep. I don't think she would take Dr. Octavius back. You don't think so? I don't because I mean, she actually says, Obviously, you know, the the robot is talking to her and trying to find out, and she thinks that it's trying to help her get over her boyfriend leaving. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If I can move on from Otto Octavius, I can get over this guy, no problem. Yeah. And it's 
it's one of those lovely moments where you're just kind of like, oh, no, you're not as smart as you think, are you? Yeah. Ock. Well, his... You know, everybody has to have a flaw, right? I mean, that's what makes characters interesting is you have to have a flaw uh, in them and somehow. And most of the times when you look at villains, they're just megalomaniacs. They're just people that want nothing but power. Mm -hmm. And I think with Doc Ock, his biggest failing isn't that he wants ultimate power and wants to take over the Earth because he's already tried that and been defeated time and time again. Right. He wants to be recognized as the superior of everyone. He doesn't have to rule wants, the earth. He just wants that recognition. And as we've seen when he did the whole uh, body switch thing with Peter Parker initially, and he was having all those flashbacks and memories, what he really wants is he wants to be loved because he's never yeah. really been loved as a kid even had, or growing up. And so that's I think that's his ultimate failing is is love and everything that he's doing right now is yep. to not get back at Peter Parker, not to become the superior Spider-Man again, right. but to find love. <laughs> it's kind of touching. Well, to a degree. And there's also the fact that he's a terrible sociopath and right. confuses well, there's love with respect. Right. Which is also problematic because he wants people to respect and fear him. And, you know, it's, it's definitely an approachable thought process. I do like this Otto Octavius because... I really feel like as good advice as it is to say the villain should be the hero of their own story. Right. It's also limiting because a lot of people translate that to make the villain a hero who does bad things. Mm -hmm. And that's not necessarily the point of a villain. And Octavius is in many ways courageous, in many ways daring. Mm -hmm. In many ways, spectacular. In many ways, uh, amazing. What other? Uh, in many ways, friendly neighborhood. But yes. never heroic. Yeah. He's not a hero. He's a selfish jack wagon. Mm -hmm. And all the things that he does are for selfish reasons. And I really like that because even he can't admit to himself that he's doing these things for the wrong reasons. Right. That really works for me. I think that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean... I don't know. I can't, I cannot right now as, as we do this build up, and that's what these are. It's probably a five or six issue run mm -hmm. leading up to this uh, dead, no more thing. Dead, no more. I really can't find fault with this storyline because I find it fascinating in that we're seeing Electro come back from the dead. Um, was it last issue when, uh, what's his name? The, the other Spider-Man, the Prowler guy that, Hobie. uh, Hobie, what's his name? Hobie, I forget Hobie his Brown. Name. Hobie Brown. That's what I thought. Yeah. Uh, and I, his I'm big like, brother, Abe Brown is one of the, uh, sons of the tiger. Now he's not, um, he's not from ultimate universe. Is he? He's not miles Morales, no. uncle. Is he? No, no. This is the Hobie Brown from the main universe who dates okay. back to, oh gosh, he dates back to Lee and, uh, Romita on Spider-Man, like issue 74 or 75. Okay. With his purple and green, ugly costume. Okay, I just wanted to to double check on that because I'm like, well, I don't remember. I mean, again, I don't have. Yeah, as, this is this is the original. Okay, yeah, because I don't have as big a connection with uh, the Marvel universe and its rich history as I do with others. So that's why for me, this is kind of a new character that I wasn't so familiar with. Um, yeah. So that's why I asked on that. But he's uh, been know, he's around back. forever, but he's never been in the spotlight like this for this long. So. Yeah, I don't know. I really like this story. I thought that there were some. Um, I thought there was some, uh, you know, quirky, uh, Spider-Man, um, you know, his flippant comments that he, that he throws out there. I thought those were good. I thought the, the patho or the yeah, pathos of, uh, of, uh, Doc Ock was great. Pathos. Yeah. The pathos, the pathos. Uh, I thought that that was really good. Um, I'm not a big fan of, um, of what's her name? Anna Maria. Eh. For some reason, I just, she rubs me the wrong way for some reason. She can be a brusque character, and the fact that – I think part of it is the fact that she has such a sweet spot for Dr. Octopus. Mm -hmm. You kind of think of her, or I kind of think of her, as being a kind of a superior Spider-Man type character. Somebody who you know is on the wrong side of things there. But I, I can definitely see it. She does – she's very rude to Peter in this arc. Yeah or in this version, this volume of the book in a lot of ways, because he's not Otto and she was really on board with a lot of Otto's forward thinking 
kind of ambitious goals that Peter doesn't always share. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I can see that. Yeah. Um, and there's probably some other things that I have issues with her too. I mean, she just seems very, <laughs> um, Oh, Parker, you fool. Yeah. She's very bossy. I think is, is part, is part of the thing that I have with her. Um, not that that's a bad thing. If you're be, trying to be strong and trying to point out to your boss, you know, where he potentially is making a mistake. Right. Um, but I think a lot of times she assumes that she is more superior than, than right. Peter Parker, which, yeah, you know, I that can... may be what it's building to in the next uh, 12 months. I don't know. And that, that building is one of the problems that I have with the issue. Okay. Because it, again, you can't necessarily blame a book for the solicits that sell it. Mm -hmm. But the solicits made this issue seem like it is heavy duty part and parcel lead up to this big crossover and right. it's going to be important. And the, what this really is, is kind of a tying up of a subplot that's been in the book since, well, at least Amazing Spider-Man number one, that last version. Mm -hmm. And I think that, I don't know, I felt like I expected there to be more actual reference to dead no more in this there's really well, nothing here and that's the problem because this is the middle arc so you know right. in the first arc we have uh francine uh electro's form a uh, girlfriend that he fried right. uh, she's a thrill seeker dates all the villains kind of thing we see her coming back to life and we see the electro setup mm -hmm. and then we get to see um uh J. Jonah Jameson's dad in the hospital and new you appears and says, Hey, we've got this radical procedure that clones the body parts that are having problems, removes mm -hmm. all the genetic defects. We'll basically let you live forever. And Peter's trying to figure this out. And then there's an explosion down in Oklahoma at one of his uh, chemical factories. And Spider-Man has to go there and save the day. Uh, and one of those uh, factory workers is seriously injured and Peter feels responsible. So he, at his own expense, brings new you in to fix this guy and then something triggers his spider sense. It's like, oh, there's something not right now. I better start investigating this new you a little bit more because there's some things they're not telling me about this procedure that Jameson's going to have done to him. Right. And uh, then he gets the prowler involved. The prowler breaks in. We find out, you know, and again, we get little flashbacks of, of the jackal doing this stuff and and, uh, you know, talking to each of these um, each of these villains and, and bringing back people that have uh, they've been lost before. In fact, even at the I think it was the end of this one. Right. Where J, J. Jonah shows up at New You and is like, here's my credit card. And they're like, oh, no, there's something even better. Here's your dead wife, Jonah. Um, and uh, so really over these last three issues has been a big setup of what the Jackal is doing. Who are the villains involved? We still don't know why the Jackal is doing this because off panel he's telling the villains what his ultimate goal is. And everyone's like, well, not even the villains because the Prowler gets involved, too. Right. And um, everyone's like, wow, this you are absolutely right. This is the thing we need to be doing. You're right. We are the good guys. I want to join your organization. So everybody's like jumping on board this big scheme. And I don't know. We don't know what that is. So from from a single issue perspective, I can see why yeah. you don't like the There's setup because it's just it's it's totally a Doc Ock story. Right. There's no reference at all to the Jackal. Right. In issue 18. Right. There is a subplot where Anna Maria is talking about new you and Doc Ock is thinking, I can use the new you to build me a right. new body. And what's weird is in each issue, it's like you're flashing back to like hours before or a day before. So you're seeing the same event from a couple of different perspectives. So mm -hmm. last issue, uh, we got to see over um, – Anna, or we got to see Anna Maria talking with Peter saying, hey, there's something going on, which is what we saw here. Mm -hmm. And we saw the brain in the background going, yes, very interesting. And this I one, we get to see it, this, yeah, this yeah, issue, have... we get to see it from Octavius's point of view. So it, that's an interesting storytelling point. But I can see totally yeah. see where you're coming from as a part three in a five or six issue lead up to uh, Better Not Dead. Mm -hmm. the, it, it, it doesn't make sense. Like it feels good. It's a standalone chapter. Yes, it is. But selling it to me as an important part of Dead No More, really, this is a story that's all about Dr. Octopus and isn't directly tied to Dead No More. Mm -hmm. So it feels kind of like Civil War damage control. Kind of. Where, okay, here's a, here's a story that happened. You know what it feels like? It's a Red Sky crossover. Mm. The crisis on Infinite Earths is taking place, but this story that we're reading in this issue of Blue Devil metaphorically right 
doesn't have anything mm-hmm, directly to mm-hmm. do with it. It just references and, it. And and here's the thing. Once this volume is collected, yes, as it will the, be a the, chapter of the bigger Yeah, thing. and when you read it all in one sitting, you'll go, "Oh, okay, now I see why this is tying up into the new that, clone saga." I which is kind of like the new Coke or the Crystal Pepsi of uh comic book events. Um so you know, I can see why why you're not you're yeah, not I'm, totally on board or you have problems with this. I went ahead and read all of the issues leading up to this. I was like, well, this is part three. I'm going to go back and read the other two parts. Right. Uh, so I see where they're going and I appreciate what Dan Slott and, and the artists are doing. Um, so I rather enjoyed it uh, quite a bit, in fact. Yeah. Hideous cover, by the way. Yeah. Well, you don't like those. Uh, is that uh, your, your favorite artist, your, your Joe Kubert covers? <laughs> no. <laughs> It's it's an Alex Ross yeah, Alex Ross just, cover. Yeah, I yeah. just I don't care for Ross's color sense, and it's just getting more and more bizarre. Uh, Spider Man wears red and blue, and so they want to make sure that we have a lot of glowing green bits. Well, I think just, isn't yeah. that supposed to be part of this um, kind of uh, because in the first issue, I think it's the first issue, maybe it's the second issue, second issue. Mm-hmm. He shows up in like some kind of a Kira Spider Man bike thing, like like out of the uh, Ultimate Spider Man series <laughs> on the on the Disney Channel. Is really weird, and you know the, <laughs> the <laughs> series. The series, uh, this new series, started with uh, Parker in Japan or China, yes. and so I wonder if they're trying to bring in some of that retro uh, Japanese Spider-Man uh, series. Oh. I know his eyes didn't glow, Ooh. but I think I think in that series, didn't it? When he had his spider sense go off, what didn't his eyes glow? Japanese Spider-Man didn't have a spider sense. Uh, Spider-Man 1978. Wait. Am I thinking right? Because anyway, I Spider- one of those had Spider-Man a thing where he had his... Spider-Man 78 did have glowing eyes. Okay, so maybe now, that's what sure this is. I'm not sure whether Japanese Spider-Man had a spider Maybe sense. that's what they're doing here is trying to, you know, bring back the feel of some of those those classic things with the glowing, well, sure. glowing stuff. And it makes sense. And with as, as electronic as this suit is now, because it's like all holographic, oh. super technology. Hydromatic. I don't know what it is. It but... must be Grease Lightning. Go grease lightning, go grease lightning, go grease lightning, go grease lightning. Um, Swinging on a web across New York. Go, go Spider Man, go, go Spider Man. Then at the end, the car will fly and you'll go, hey. You know that weird theory, right? I mean, it's been disproven by the director of that movie. Uh huh. You, you know, the theory is why the car flies at the end. Because they're dead. Yeah, because Sandy's been dead the entire time, this entire movie. <laughs> because the movie starts out with, you know, the movie Daddy's starts out with Sandy. Saving her from drowning. Yeah, sa- saving her from drowning. And what it is is not, you know, uh, Danny says, you know, he met this girl and uh, saved her from, from drowning. But what happened was he didn't save her from drowning. And this whole movie is Sandy's final, oh, oh. you know, flash moment. So I that at the end she goes this to whole heaven. Story is her dying dream. I mean, that is <laughs> well, such, the director. Such you know, a cliche. That's something that has not been uh, was never in the the musical, right? Uh, it's only in the movie. And uh, I guess a year or so ago, somebody asked the director about. It. He's like, "No, that's that's horrible." Uh, the, but, uh, the musical does end with uh, the the pretending to fly away sort of thing. I don't think. Sort of kind of like I think not. the stage play does not right. I don't know. I haven't seen the stage. Yeah, I don't play. think the stage musical does that. But but I um, was under the impression that the reason they did it in the movie was because they did it in the stage play as a metaphorical mm. send off. Oh, OK. Uh, but a lot of people are interpreting that as uh, Sandy's been dead the entire movie. <laughs> OK, those people are terrible. <laughs> well, that is not fun. That is a terrible a bit of a send that, of back, a send that back to um, the brain. Right. With Doc Octavius in there when uh, uh, Anna Maria is going to go- fly from London to. Uh, the United States to meet Peter, uh, they have to switch Octavius off. And it's kind of for him. And it is kind of, if you think about it, it is very disturbing to all of a sudden someone punches in a code into your system. And then the next thing you know, you have landed 10 hours later and you've been reactivated. again. That's got to be totally disturbing. Beep, boop, boop, boop. That's yeah, it's be like, totally disturbing. that would be like if every night you laid down on a big flat surface and then your brain just shut off no, for because, like nine hours. Because your brain does not shut off for nine hours. You experience Mine dreams. My you brain just experience off. sensations, right? So it's not like off. you it's not like sleeping. It is you are literally turned off. And that is not what sleeping is. My brain just goes bleh. Well, and then I open might, my eyes. You still, and dream, it's the next you still day. dream and you do other things, but you are 
you are not turned off when you go to bed. I mean, other people might be turned off when you go to bed, but hey, that's a different story. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, are you? Are you I really? No, I don't know. Let's break that down. Uh, I set up a joke that said that I you get turned off joke. when you go to bed. That started the whole world <laughs> crying. So what's the bottom line for you? For me, this is a... A thumbs up. This is a fun read. It's worth your time if you're an Amazing Spider-Man fan. Um, I the the art is fine. The story is fine. I I think if you're trying to lead up to the big Dead No More, maybe as a single issue it doesn't work, but in the um, big arc leading up to it, it works totally. I don't think that it doesn't work either. I think that it's it, it's not what was necessarily advertised, but it's a solid read. And aside from the hideous cover, the art's pretty phenomenal. Hmm. I, I like really the like the the uh, image of the living brain with little Dr. Octopus eyes. Yeah, sticking. yeah, yeah, that's pretty crazy. And and the weird thing is, you know, it's just it's just there for the readers. Oh, sure. Yeah. It's like, wouldn't Anna Maria see his face in his eyes if it was really that way? That's well, okay. and Peter's head doesn't literally glow. It might. No, that's, it, if you read the issue where the. Uh, where the guy was in the hospital, Peter shakes his uh, hand and then suddenly his spider sense goes off and his head's glowing and the guy in the bed is like, oh, uh, are you OK? Is something wrong? His head does not literally glow. He's it not might. Scott Scott Pilgrim. It might. It no. might. No. So are you recommending this or not recommending this? I would recommend it, but I would recommend it with the caveat that it's, it's uh, something that you have to take on its own merits. And you can't presume that uh, the thing that Marvel said it was going to be is actually 100% what it is. So, you know, you got that going for you. Coming out next week from Dark Horse Comics, we have Aliens Defiance number five, Conan the Slayer number three, Cryptocracy number four, uh, Legend of Korra trade paperback poster collection. Ooh, that'll be fun. If I'm I'm not mistaken, now this may not be what I'm thinking it is, but uh, DC has done this and some other publishers have done this where it's like a oversized book. It's like an 18 by 24 book. And in it, there are posters that you can remove mm-hmm. and hang on your wall Ooh. for 25 bucks. You might want to go check that out. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken on what that is. Uh, oh, here's a good one. Matthew Tarzan mm-hmm. on the planet of the apes. <clears throat> Wait a minute. That me earth. How this work. Me no understand. Tarzan it, it in madhouse. Earth. Earth made from men. <laughs> uh, DC Get comics. hands off Tarzan, damn dirty ape. Me and kiss plenty of ape women before. <laughs> <laughs> Action Comics six. Uh, Can you imagine Tarzan be like me? I'm Tarzan, and and Cornelius being like, "Why are you so very inarticulate?" Well, why are you dumb like all the rest of them? Exactly. It yeah, will just feed into their expectations. That's going to that's gonna be weird because it's like, how would Tarzan have a different frame of reference except now suddenly the apes are talking to him? Mm. I mean, he was raised from a baby. He doesn't know how to speak. Except for ape. Mm. That'll be an interesting issue to check out next week from Dark Horse Comics. DC Comics, Action Comics 964. Batgirl number three, Batman Beyond Rebirth number one. The rebirths continue. Blue Beetle number one. Uh, let's see. Deathstroke number f- uh, three. Flash number seven. Scooby Doo team ups number 18. Mm-hmm. Titans number three. Wacky Raceland number four. <laughs> that book is getting weird. I know. Uh, you know, uh, Dirk Dastardly is getting his own series and it's going to be written by Garth Ennis. Nice. Yeah. It's definitely, it's worth the read. It's, it's, it's nuts, but it's worth the read. Yeah. Wonder Woman number seven also comes out next week from DC Comics. Over at the IDW that just had a recent, um, a recent uh, change in their editorial staff. They have Back to the Future number 12, Back to the Future Citizen Brown number five of five. That's the last issue of that. Mask Revolution. Oh, the, all the revolution stuff comes out. Did you get to read Revolution number one today? Not yet. Not yet. Oh, I know Chris Wilson is really looking forward to this. Yeah. Micronauts Revolution number one. Rom uh, gets a second printing. My Little Pony Friendship is Magic number 46. Strawberry Shortcake number six. Tales from the Dark Side number four. And X-Files Origins number two. X-Files. Image Comics has a Deadly Class number 22. 
Eden's Fall number two, Hunt number three, <laughs> Island number eleven, Odyssey number eleven, <laughs> Odyssey, Odyssey, O O D Y C, Odyssey, O D Y C. Think Tank gets trade paperback, Thief of Thieves number thirty five, and Wayward number sixteen, all from Image Comics next week. Carry Marvel, on, my wayward son. Marvel Comics has the all-new, all-different Avengers trade paperback volume two. That's the family business. Black Panther epic collection trade paperback. Captain America Sam Wilson number 13. That's a CW2 tie-in, as is uh, Captain America Steve yep. Rogers number five, Hail Hydra. Right. Uh, Captain Marvel is, oh, I think all of these are CW2s. Captain Marvel number nine, Deadpool number 19. That's not a CW2, but Civil War II Kingpin number three of four also comes out. Drax number 11. Doctor Strange Annual number one. George Romero's Empire of the Dead hardcover. That's a $50 book if you want to get that. New Avengers number 16. Nova number 11. Uh, Spider Gwen number 12. Star Does Wars number 23. Spider can. Yeah. Uh, Ultimates number 11 or Ultimates. <laughs> Ultimatus. Ultimates. 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 Uh, Web Warriors number the 11, and X Men number 2, Ultimates. number 7. Ultimates. And all the rest, Adventure Time Comics number 3. And again, a lot of people are asking, didn't they just have an Adventure Time series? Yes, that was called Adventure Time. This one is Adventure Time Comics. Oh, this is different. Yeah, this is different. Adventure time. Wait, uh, Assassin's number. Creed Locus number one, Backstagers. Oh, yeah, that's what it says. Backstagers number two. Mm -hmm. It's all about the comings and goings on backstage at uh, a, pl a playhouse, I'm sure. <laughs> at a place, yeah. Yes. Uh, Captain <laughs> Canuck 2015 Ongoing number nine. Love that book. It's so weird. It's awesome. Uh, Dishonored number three, Disney Pirates of the Caribbean number 11 or Caribbean. Or Caramel or Caramel. Pirates of the Caramel Bean. Yes. Doctor Carmel. Who, the 11th Doctor number two, or sorry, Doctor Who, year two uh, number 13, which you right. know how they're doing it. I know it says year two number 13, but if you look in the uh, actual title stuff, it, that's where the 2.13s come from. Right. So if you it's see. Doctor Who 2.13. Yeah. If you see Doctor Who 2.13, that's what it is. Doctor Who, the 12th Doctor, year two, number nine. And Doctor Who, the fourth Doctor, number five of five. That's the final of that <laughs> miniseries. So 12, so it's 11, 11 2. 12. Uh, yeah, it's 11. Uh, it's 11, 2.13, 10, 2.9, no, and four, five of five? 12, 2.9, and four, <laughs> and four, number five. Well, where's 10? No number 10 this week. There was a bunch of Doctor Who last week. I think that was 10, 9, and three was last week. Ten nine three. Oh, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. They need to get that uh, figured out. <laughs> uh, let's see. Evil heroes number two. Evil, evil hero. Grim fairy tales adult coloring book, different seasons edition. Now it's not a. Uh, it's grim fairy tales, so I'm sure there's an adult nature to it, but it's not an adult coloring book. My aunt. Right. It's know, an adult I, coloring book. But I was not always an adult. Yeah, I was always, you know, I've always questioned, you know, why these adult coloring books? Why are they not just called coloring books? Carl wrote a fantastic article about a year or so ago on uh, the Major Spoilers website talking about how coloring books, how they can really help people uh, therapeutically, mentally, etc. Uh, my aunt is in the was in the hospital. She was having she was near death, critical care, care and whatever. And as she was recovering this last weekend, um, my cousin brought in a an adult coloring book, but it was like the dirty words coloring book so as you're coloring you're <laughs> revealing all these dirty words and that's kind of the way my aunt is my aunt and uncle are uh but yeah it really helped her get through the boringness that was just sitting in the hospital while her her medications kicked in so she could breathe again so that um, is very cool yeah and i see these things all the time at bookstores and now almost everywhere i think i saw them at dylan's the other day mm -hmm. adult coloring books are all the rage yeah, and you know what? I think uh, the 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 pumpkin spice incense sticks are going to become all the rage. You know, no. fall is tomorrow or today, depending on when you're listening to this. Hello, future people. Or it may know, be a, a month ago. Months. Yeah, hello, future people. We love these topical references. I know, right? Josie and the Happy Pussycats New Year, number one comes out next week. <laughs> Kim and Kim number three, King's Quest number five. That's the final issue of that. I think that's where you finally rescue the princess, but find out she's in another tower. Munchkin no, number twenty one. No, it's um, it's uh, King's Quest, so it's a, it's another tower. Rick and Morty number eighteen. 
Sentient number one. Uh, Smosh, Smosh number four of six. They continue to publish that thing. Yeah, but it's been like a year I for know, four right? issues. I know, right? Uh, Tank Girl Gold number one. Three Stooges, Red, White, and Stooge number one. The Curly, Larry, <laughs> or Moe cover. There's three variants on that. Is there a wraparound torture no, cover? there's not a wraparound <laughs> torture cover. Well, let's good. See. Uh, let's see what we do dead. have. Uh, let's see what we do have with some crazy. Oh, here we go. Vamp Blade number eight. You've got the Young cover. Right. The uh, I think this is the artist, Winston Young. Winston Young risque cover. 90s monster. 90s monsters risque cover. Mm-hmm. The uh, the Chang cover and the Chang risque cover. Chang? Yes. From Community? I guess. Nice. Then you also have Vikings Uprising, which has a wall cover, W-A-H-L, so they're getting out the hair clippers. Right. Uh, Hammermeister. Uh I Karanfa, hardly know her. Karanfa, C-A-R-A-N-F-A. Mm-hmm. You have a glass cover and a Burns cover. I think a Karanfa is one of those things that they use to pour wine at a classy restaurant. Okay. Uh, they have the Women of Darby Pop number one coming out next week. And Zach, Zombie Exterminator number one, limited signed chainsaw edition, mature readers, $20. Why would you sign a chainsaw? Maybe it's torn up by a chainsaw. You sign it with a chainsaw? That's I don't know. Free. It doesn't make sense, but it's $20, whatever it is. Or you could just get the Zack Zombie Exterminator graphic novel for $20 or the Zack Zombie Exterminator hardcover graphic novel for $35. Uh, you could also get the Z-Men trade paperback. Uh, the volume Z-Men? One, the Z-Men. That's the Zombie Men thing. That's from uh, Take-Two Interactive. Uh, or you could get Zoe Dare versus Disastroid number four. Gesundheit. I think you just take it a little preparation H to take care of that. Next week on Dueling Review. Friends, countrymen, lend me your long tails and ears for hats, because the Pussycats are back. In this series kickoff, Josie's getting the band back together to help her achieve her dreams of musical stardom. But for the group to last, it needs a strong foundation of friendship and trust. Can the girls get along, or will Alexandra's plotting put a stop to the whole thing? Don't miss Comic Supreme Song Stresses return to the limelight in this exciting first issue. Josie and the Pussycats, number one. You can show your support for this show and everything we do at Major Spoilers by becoming a Patreon member at patreon.com slash major spoilers. If you found some fun in this, why don't throw a buck an episode our way? It's only a couple of bucks a month. Your contribution allows us to keep this show going, pay for the growing costs, and gives us motivation to produce more content for you. That's patreon.com slash major spoilers. Thank you so much for checking out Dueling Review, and we will talk with you next time when you'll hear Matthew say, Ooh, delicious slorg. This podcast is copyright 2016 by Major Spoilers Entertainment, LLC.